Good day, everybody. Welcome back to another Rosh Reviews, where today you join me here in beautiful Osaka, Japan. And when I say beautiful, that is, of course, if you are a duck, because <laughs> it is wet. It is being a miserable day, but we are in a Daihatsu Kopen. We have got the top down finally after hours and hours and hours of waiting for the skies to clear. And this little Daihatsu, it's kind of an interesting thing. What do you guys think? Now here in Japan, K cars are everywhere because like so many other countries, the government does tax you depending on the size and power your car does make. And the K class is the smallest. So people that buy a K car will pay the least amount of road tax. And you know, these things were designed, look, the early 50s here after World War II as just cheap transportation. And you've all seen a, quite a few of these cars, you know, sprung in the early 90s, the Cappuccino, the AutoZam, even more later cars like this thing would be competing with the Honda S660. Now this Copen, I would actually say it is a direct competitor to the Honda S660 and one of very few sporty, fun K cars that they still sell here in Japan new. This particular one, they still sell this, brand new, and it isn't that much money. The Honda S660 has sadly been discontinued, but only just recently, I believe it was last year, they stopped production. And uh, look, it is a real shame because this car, I would say it's definitely not as crazy as the Honda S660, but this one definitely has a little bit more practicality into it, uh, at least in terms of its space and ergonomics, that's for sure. Now, Daihatsu isn't really a well-known brand, at least to us Westerners, because uh, we don't have them, uh, at least not in Australia, Canada, USA, you know, you name it, the UK. Here in Japan, though, Daihatsu is rather quite popular. It really is. And almost every other K car I see is a Daihatsu. And this Copen, it is quite popular. Now, there are two generations of Copen, this being the latest second generation. And this particular one was launched in 2014 and it is still being made today. The early first generation was launched in 2002 and it did look rather different. Uh, it was quite cute, I think I would say. And uh, they actually did sell those ones in the UK as a 1.3 liter, so not a K car. Here in Japan, they all have to be 660 cc's or less. This particular Copen has a three-cylinder turbocharged 658 cc engine, about 64 horsepower and about 92 pound-feet of torque. Not a lot, but I will tell you, here in Japan, you do not need a lot of power to have fun because these roads, they're about a 30 kilometer per hour road. They are incredibly tight and when you just start throwing this thing around these corners wow it is some fun and we're only doing about 50 kilometers per hour that is the joy the beauty of a k car now unfortunately this particular one we have rented today here in osaka is a automatic and it says it's a seven speed, but it really is just a CVT. It's a seven speed CVT. It's changing pulleys, not gears. And although it's still, when you just put it in sport mode and you drive, it'll still be nippy enough to enjoy. You wanna have the manual and you can get these in a five speed manual, which I highly recommend to to anyone who's gonna buy one of these, go for the manual. It's just really gonna be that much more engaging and fun to drive. I have driven the CVT in the Honda S660 and the six-speed manual in the Honda S660, and the manual just completely changed that car into a true legendary car, it really did. 
Now you can also get a couple of different looks on this Copen, the new one here. You can go for a face that looks similar to the first generation, or you can go for something that's a little bit more angry like we have here today. You can also go to your local Toyota dealer here in Japan and get a Copen GR. Yes, that's right. A Toyota Copen GR is a thing here. I don't know why, but it is. And again, this particular one is a Robe S. So this is a bit of a special edition. So this particular one does have a Momo branded steering wheel. We do have red Recaro racing bucket seats. And this particular car did also get Bill Stein suspension. And it is bloody firm, like too firm. It's unbelievably firm and I just got pelted with some water, sorry guys. And these 16 inch wheels, I believe they're a 16 inch wheel, they hook up rather good. You know, it is a CVT, it is only got 60 horsepower. <laughs> but it is enough to put a smile on my face. The brakes seem to work rather good, even though at the rear they are just drums, which that is some old tech on a brand new car. And with the Bilstein suspension, you know, although it might hurt you in the city, out here on the mountain, this Copen is flat. The steering has a lot of weight. It just feels really fun to push hard into a really tight hairpin. Crank that wheel, put the accelerator down. Hear that CVT whine. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. And uh, surprisingly enough, I reckon this would keep up with quite a few cars on this back road because this Copen only weighs about 850 kilos and yeah, it is light on its feet, handles like a dream, and as long as you keep that momentum going, geez, it moves around this mountain rather briskly. And look, just nipping around, doing a U-turn, very easy in this car as you would expect. Uh, you know, all of these K cars, they do have to follow a very tight re legislation of how big they can be, so these things are not big. And this particular generation, you can actually get GTR body kits on it. So yeah, I'll show you a picture of what these things look like. And I gotta say, I gotta admit, in a five-speed manual with one of those body kits, they are a rather cool little toy. I will definitely give Daihatsu that. Now here in Japan, if you wanna actually get your Japanese driver's license, it apparently costs something like $5,000 and takes bloody three years to get it. You want to know why? Because these roads are the most ridiculous, dangerous, just <laughs> insane batches of bitumen you've ever seen. And it is bloody dangerous. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, I'm quite confident driving and these roads absolutely terrify me because I'm in a K car, the smallest class of vehicle here in Japan. And I feel like this is big. You know, if I was in a full-size sedan in my Falcon going around these corners, oh my word, it would be scary. Because not only do you gotta watch out for traffic on the other side, there are drains the size of bloody Mexico on the left. So, you know, designed to swallow K cars entirely, there are drains to the left of you and there are massive trucks, cars, anything with four wheels next to a K car coming towards you on the right side is death as well. So I can understand why it's so complicated to get your license here because you definitely want to be confident driving and you definitely want to know what you're doing. Unfortunately today, our 0 to 100 test is not going to happen because, well, have a look at these roads. And I've done a few of these K cars 0 to 100, especially in a CVT. We are going to be looking north of 10 seconds. <laughs> and you're going to need a lot of road for that. Is this a beautiful car? No, I don't think so. But I will give this car some benefits because when the top is up, normal people can actually fit in here. I'm 5'11", 
and I've got about, I'd say, an inch and a half, two inches still of usable headroom. So someone who is six foot, six foot one, maybe, you could theoretically fit in this car. And with the top down, obviously it is a little bit easier. It's not the biggest for leg room. Uh, you know, anyone bigger than six foot, you are gonna struggle. Again, it's not the most comfortable car in the world because the Bilstein suspension just is so damn harsh, but it is very fun. And I will say in a five speed manual with maybe a cool body kit on this car, this is a huge amount of fun for $20,000, it is. And the prices of these cars are only gonna go down dramatically in the next five years. So for anyone who is thinking about importing one of these, maybe over to Australia or the United Kingdom, this is a pretty cool thing, it is. And quite a lot of Japanese, I have been to a few car shows since coming to Japan. A lot of the Japanese people seem to like these, buy them and take them out. I've seen a, oh, you son of a And look again, it is just the harshness of this car, the bill shine. If you're gonna look for one of these, maybe don't get one with the bill shines unless you're gonna properly race this thing on a track as a fun track car or something. Uh, yeah, it's harsh. Now, if you guys are enjoying this type of content, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button and click the bell notifications so you do get updated on all my weekly uploads here. And uh, again, guys, what, what can I say? You know, we're here in Osaka, cruising the streets in a fun sporty K car. And uh, although the weather has been uh, for the ducks, we did manage to get the top down and uh, <laughs> it is going all right now. And let's go. 60 horsepower, let's go. <laughs> oh man, you got a sport mode here, but it doesn't change much, really, yeah. If you run the gears yourself, the gears, it will give you a slight advantage, but not much, guys. Now, I'm gonna finish the video off here today, guys, so, again, what do we think of this Daihatsu Copen? Because I think these are a blast, and for 20 grand for a newish fun K car, I gotta give it to Daihatsu, because I think this is a really fun car. Yes, it's a CVT, this one. You're gonna get the manual if you're actually gonna buy one here. We got Recaro seats, a Momo branded wheel, Bill Stein suspension, it's a blast to drive. Yes, it's extremely harsh, but this is a weekender. And as a weekender, it is bloody fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you're new here. We'll see you on that next video. Oh, 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 oh,